Hi, I'm Matt Marshall, founder and editor-in-chief of VentureBeat. Today, we want to dig into something that many people may have missed about the DeepSeek R1 release, and then the recently released OpenAI Deep Research. Specifically, we want to explore what these mean for developers and other technical people working at companies building AI applications. The big news, of course, is that DeepSeek has provided an industry-leading reasoning model that is extremely cheap to use costing about a 30th of what the leading competitor OpenAI's O1 cost. And DeepSeek is open and transparent about its reasoning steps. It's created a crazy simple way for you to build your own really smart customized AI models. You could do this through distillation, which uses the DeepSeek model to teach your own smaller model superior reasoning. In addition, you can fine tune the model with examples of your own domain knowledge or style of answering. For 99% of companies, it's going to be enough to use something called RAG or Retrieval Augmented Generation to give your models access to ground them in your company's information and domain specifics. And the significance of the OpenAI Deep Research release this week is that it's really sort of a fancy RAG. It crawls the entire web and does really customized research. Essentially, you'll be able to provide that sophisticated research output as further input into your knowledge base as you go. This is the emergence of something called agentic rag, where you can have tools going out for your own model and finding the best context wherever it is. If you're not on top of this, you're falling behind. There are going to be armies of these purpose-built small models for every business application out there. DeepSeek R1 reaffirmed a huge swing toward what's called the reinforcement learning paradigm. This swing started happening over the past few months among the leading AI companies like OpenAI and Google. What it meant was spending more time after pre-training a model to work on ways to have the model do better reasoning, mainly through reinforcement learning. This is important because developer companies using DeepSeek, or more accurately, the methods it uses, can get much more powerful reasoning for their own application areas. They can now inject their own data sets around their own problems and application areas into this model or other smaller models and they can get very effective quickly. Take, for example, gas electric utility. It has its own questions and answers around gas leak detection issues. It could feed these questions and answers into an open model to get a model of its own or take healthcare. This can be done for medical apps for doctors or retail. This could be better for commerce apps for retail companies. Like I said, 99% of the time, it's easiest to use RAG, which grounds the model with your company's real data and domain specifics. This also counteracts the hallucination problems that we've seen pop up with DeepSeek, where studies show that it hallucinates 14% of the time compared to just 8% of the time for OpenAI's O3 model. Okay, so the important thing about when you're working with LLMs is all about, you know, what you can inject into the context window or the in-context learning. What are you going to basically show it that it can use as knowledge to give it its final answer? So one of the most common ways of doing this is RAG. And it starts out something like this, where you've got a, a, a question or a query from a user. It goes into the LLM. The LLM decides how to write that as a query for a, a, a database. And that, that's a special kind of database that's, that we call a vector store. But really, all this is going to do is go and get some documents. And those documents are going to relate to the query that you've got. And then they're going to be combined with your query in question back in the LLM to give the final answer. Now, while this is a really sort of simple version of it, it doesn't always have to have a database like this. It could have things like just a normal conventional database, it could have a knowledge graph, it could have just documents, it could have tools or APIs that you go off and do a search on some APIs or on you know, Google, for example, and bring data back from there. But the key idea is that you're going to go and get this data and then you're going to bring it back in the form of some kind of documents or something combine it with the original question to derive the final answer out from the LLM. And this is fundamentally how these systems work. Now, there are two main exceptions for when a company needs more than RAG. First, when you want to give the model examples of your own style, your company style, or let's say you have 
such a very obscure domain area that information about it has not been exposed to the language model during its training. Take, for example, a container ship company that has all these niche terminologies and protocols in the industry around building container ships. And that's not in books or on the web. So yes, you'll want to fine tune the model with data around those specifics to make it better able to reason for that company's needs. Now, if you have the resources, you should use SFT or supervised fine tuning to inject your data sets directly into the model before it's used. And ideally, you'd also use reinforcement learning to further align the model to adjust to your own tone and customs. But for the vast majority of companies, RAG is going to be enough. We should also note the power of DeepSeek's transparency around its reasoning capability, which it's exposing freely for people to see. OpenAI's closed model, O1, which does reasoning, is very secretive about how it's doing it. So this is what's opened the eyes to everyone, and people are going to be using DeepSeek's model to teach their own models how to do this distillation, or using other models outside of DeepSeek to do this as well. This second takeaway is pricing. While the tech industry did assume the cost of delivering models would come down over time, DeepSeek surprised the market by how aggressively this would happen. Most people are now agreeing the cost curve is going to keep coming down. Dario Amodai, who's the CEO of Anthropic, wrote a post after the DeepSeek release saying that it's going to come down around 4x this cost of building models each year. So you can now use an amazingly flexible, open, capable model for a crazy cheap price. This not only means you can do a whole bunch more experimentation around these models to build AI applications, but when you deploy them, they're going to be less expensive too. It's essentially a free IQ boost. So you've got to get going. Other people will eat your lunch if you don't. Finally, DeepSeek exposed a fallacy that emerged in AI that the, only the big AI labs and companies could really innovate. This fallacy had forced a lot of other AI builders to the sidelines. OpenAI and others had long been spreading a sort of FUD into the market by saying, hey, this AI stuff is incredibly complicated. Only PhDs from Stanford and MIT can do this. And it's expensive and will take billions of dollars to compete. You may as well let us, the leading providers, OpenAI, Microsoft, Anthropic, Google, let us do everything. You shouldn't even try. DeepSeek has put a stop to that. It has given everyone inspiration that there's a ton of ways to innovate in this area, more than we all realized. For the rest of us who won't be doing all the pre-training of models because we don't have that sort of money, it's okay. Because the most exciting steps really are after the pre-training of models like reinforcement learning and fine tuning. And there, all the tricks are out in the open. So it's open season to go experiment. So what is distilling? It's using this larger model as a teacher model. And you ask it a bunch of questions and record how it answered those questions. And you feed those question sets into the smaller model. We can see in the paper, DeepSeek used that same sort of process on small models like Quen 32B or smaller Llama models, making those models much smarter. The point is that people are going to be teaching these smaller models to get smarter and then injecting those models with their own data sets. Look at the example that Chris Hay from IBM did, where he walks through exactly how he does this using a math data set to teach a very small model he's running on his laptop how to reason through math in ways he wants. He also shows how laser quick the output is, even compared to OpenAI's O1 working on the same problem. Basically, Chris is replicating what R1 showed in its paper, that the model needed a jump start to get started on its reasoning journey. This is called cold start data. By showing the model ways to answer certain questions step by step, the model learned from those questions and got a lot more efficient in the way it did its own reasoning. But it means that everyone else can build very powerful industry-leading models based on only thousands of examples. Chris cautions, you've got to be careful because you might ruin the model for other tasks. And from the DeepSeek paper, it says for distilled models, we apply only SFT and do not include an RL stage, even though incorporating RL could substantially boost model performance. They make these models much smarter in reasoning in various areas. You won't necessarily be using DeepSeek R1 for a lot of this work. It's a reasoning model, but it's big, and you don't really need the full power of that size all the time. 
Take, for example, Google Flash Thinking. That model even decided to provide two answers. Now let's talk briefly about the open source route. Not every company needs to use this, but for companies that have sensitive data, medical uses, where you want to have data on premise, for example, closed source models are going to be fine. But what's changed there is that the pricing is going to be pressured down by everything that's happened with DeepSeek. This is dead easy to do, by the way. Even for someone like me, who is not a data scientist and limited coding ability, I was able to easily download a distilled version of DeepSeek to then query specific docs I had from job candidates to see if they had the, back, the tech background I was looking for. I did get help. There are plenty of videos from people showing you how to do this, including one of Nariman Kodes, a senior software engineer at uh, HubSpot. But here you can see, uh, I just did this on, on my own uh, VS Code editor, 70 lines of code. Now I adjusted Nariman's code to download the smallest distilled model, uh, Quen 1.5b, so that it wouldn't take up too much space on my Mac. It was great. You know, true to style, the model showed me it's thinking behind its answer. Of course, distilling the small version was much easier than downloading the entire 600 billion plus parameter main DeepSeek R1 model directly, which requires hardware that might cost me somewhere between $3,000 and $6,000. But it's not really necessary to download the big model since these small models are fine for specific tasks like mine. Companies are going to strive for perfection as they always will. Um, and that's ultimately the, the long-term goal is to get all that data in place so that the large language models can access that data with its reasoning wherever it is. But in the meantime, you know, short of that perfection, companies are going to want to, to offer point solutions, right? Applications around specific areas. And so we're just going to have to uh, have, have uh, enough data, enough accurate data around those specific point solutions to get started. Thanks everyone for watching. Like and subscribe for more insights into the latest in AI and technology. For deeper analysis and updates, visit VentureBeat.com and sign up for our newsletters. Stay informed and ahead of the curve.